Let us review the leaf and its functions at the cellular level. The tissue of the leaf can be represented by distinct layers. These layers involve the major tissue systems of the leaf, such as the epidermis, which makes up the upper and lower outer layers of the leaf, the mesophyll, which is tissue in the interior of the leaf and the primary location of photosynthesis, and the arrangement of veins, which involve the xylem and phloem in vascular bundles. Let's start with the outer layers first, the epidermis tissue. The major cell types of the epidermal tissue are epidermal cells, which are closely packed with little intercellular space. Epidermal cells are the most numerous and least specialized in the tissue layer. Epidermal hair cells, which are outgrowths from the epidermis. Guard cells, which regulate the size of the pore openings in the leaf epidermis. And subsidiary cells, which assist the pore regulation and are part of the stomatal complex. The epidermis can be further specified as the upper and lower epidermis. The upper refers to the above-facing surface of the leaf, and the lower refers to the surface of the underside of the leaf. The epidermis can be as thin as one outer layer of cells, or it can be a few cell layers thick. Epidermal cells secrete a cuticle that covers the epidermal surfaces in a waxy film consists of lipid and hydrocarbon polymers impregnated with wax, has an insoluble cuticular membrane. The waxy covering can be smooth or structured with bulges, folds, furrows, filaments, and rods. Cuticle can be pigmented with carotenoids that trap light for photosynthesis and provide protection to chlorophyll. The cuticle creates a permeable barrier for water and other molecules forms a physical barrier that resists penetration and prevents contamination of plant tissue from external conditions. Epidermal cells secrete additional waxes, oils, resins, salt crystals, and mucilage, all of which assist the function of the leaf. Basic epidermal cells lack chloroplasts. Here is an example of the waxy barrier effect. Epidermal cells have attachments of various shape, structure, and function, called trichomes. Epidermal hair cells, or trichomes, are outgrowths from the epidermis, stemming from the epidermal cells. Trichomes can consist of one cell, or sometimes consist of multiple cells. They can protect and support. They make up the absorbing hair of roots, Multicellular trichomes can contain cells from tissues other than the epidermis. The lower epidermis on the underside of the leaf is very similar to the upper epidermis, except the lower epidermis usually contains pores called stomata. A stoma is a pore space used to control gas exchange. It can be found in the epidermis of leaves, stems, and other organs. Water vapor from transpiration and oxygen from photosynthesis can be released through the pore spaces. Air can enter the plant through the pore spaces. Stoma are surrounded on each side by chloroplasts containing guard cells. Here are guard cells and stoma seen through a microscope. Guard cells are specialized parenchyma cells that regulate the size of the pore opening. The stoma and guard cells functioning together make up the stomata. Surrounding the pore and guard cells are up to four subsidiary cells that do not have chloroplasts. The subsidiary cells assist the stomata function, combining with the stoma and guard cells to make up the stomatal complex. Here's a basic description of how the guard cells work. Different positive and negative electrical potentials change the guard cell turga tension by allowing an increase or decrease of water in the cell. Depending on the difference in potential, water will diffuse in or out of the cell by osmosis. Guard cells have rings of cellulose microfibrils that restrict the cell width from swelling 
but allows the cells to expand by lengthening. When the guard cells lengthen, they bow apart from each other. An increase in the volume of water will lengthen and bow apart the guard cells to reveal the stoma pore space. A decrease in water that diffuses out of the guard cells will cause material in the cell to pull away from the cell wall, reducing the swelling or tension. This decrease brings the guard cells together to cover the pore space. Sandwiched between the upper and lower epidermis is the mesophyll tissue layer. The mesophyll tissue layer is mostly photosynthetic parenchyma or chlorenchyma ground tissue that developed from meristem zones where cells can divide and differentiate. Parenchyma cells are versatile ground tissue that can provide many functions. They can remain meristematic, keeping the ability for cell division. Chlorenchyma cells contain chloroplasts, are elongated in strands or cylinders, and provide structural support. The mesophyll can be divided into two distinct layers an upper mesophyll palisade layer and a spongy mesophyll layer beneath the palisade layer. The upper palisade layer is tightly packed vertically long cylindrical cells regularly arranged in single or multiple layers. These cells contain a large amount of chloroplasts positioned close to the cell wall in order to maximize the intake of light. Their cylindrical shape also allows a large amount of light to reach the chloroplast. Here is a diagram of the intercellular space between cells of the mesophyll layer. The intercellular space provides capillary action for water distribution and can absorb carbon dioxide. Beneath the palisade layer is the spongy mesophyll layer. The spongy mesophyll layer has cells that are more rounded in shape and not as tightly packed as the palisade layer. The spongy tissue involves the interchange of gases needed for photosynthesis. The spongy mesophyll cells contain fewer chloroplasts and have larger air spaces than the palisade cells. The intercellular spaces of the spongy layer are connected to the substomatal chambers where the pores open into. Mixed in with the spongy layer are veins containing the vascular transport tissue. The vascular tissue of the leaf are located in the spongy layer of the mesophyll. The vascular bundle is the package of xylem and phloem tissue embedded in a dense parenchyma ground tissue sheath that surrounds the xylem and phloem tubes. The ground tissue sheath usually includes some structural cholenchyma tissue. The sheath provides strength and protection. The sheath can consist of one or more cell layers. The xylem tissue mainly conducts water and nutrients from the roots to the leaves. The phloem tissue mainly conducts organic material made by photosynthesis from the leaves to the rest of the plant.